I honestly don't know what to say. Because the performance is getting so much worse. I just watched Coventry 3, Luton Town 2. It's gotten to the point where I thought we turned a corner just a week ago. We played Watford, the performance was excellent. Then we played Sunderland and despite the defeat, the performance was also really good, really positive and we got sucker punched. Sunderland took their chances and going into this game today, we went unchanged and I've calmed down a bit. I have. So going into this game, at half time, I was thinking, wow, this is a performance just like Sunderland put in at Kenilworth Road. Because Coventry were by far the better side. And Coventry were fantastic today. They were. But that first half performance, Luton had to weather a storm. Coventry were fantastic, but we defended with our lives, just like Sunderland did. And sorry, Sunderland fans, I didn't give you credit in my post-match reaction. But yeah, you defended really well. You know, we went direct and you did really well to deal with the threat that we posed. Today, we were direct in the first half and Coventry couldn't deal with Morris and Elijah. Whenever we attacked, we scored pretty much or came really close to it with a Chong chance to hit the post. At half time, I was thinking this is the Luton of 22-23. Defensively, they were bodies on the line. Everyone was throwing themselves in front of the ball. We were doing so well. I thought, yes, this is a vintage away performance. We're doing exactly what I would expect after the performances against Watford and Sunderland. But then the second half happened. And just browsing through social media, there are people calling for Rob to leave which everyone's entitled to their opinion, but that second half performance, if I were to put a word to it, gutless. It was a gutless performance. The players look knackered, which is fair. It was an unchanged lineup, but realistically, the manager's watching the same game that we're all watching, and we could see that the players looked gassed. We could see that the players needed perhaps a change of shape. As soon as Carlton Morris and Elijah Adebayo went off, we lost all out balls. If you need to visualize it, I recommend using FOTMOB's momentum counter. So in the first half, we had some attacks. Yes, Coventry were fantastic. They were zipping the ball around really well. But one thing I noticed from Coventry in the first half, you could see up until the final third, Coventry were fantastic and then in the final third you could see that Haji Ryan Ellis Sims they had no confidence there was none of that assured finishing that you know that those two can bust out and before the game as well just going away from the second half I don't even want to think about it right now Sky Sports showed the depth in the Coventry attack and I was looking at those names, I was thinking, wow, I wish we had that type of depth. They have five players that are all very good at this level and young talents that are desperate to prove themselves. And then I look at our attacking options and we don't have nearly the depth up top that they have. You know, past Morris and Elijah, there's Brown and then what? There's Woodrow who has struggled like i'll never dig out a player woodrow i don't think he is up to this level he had a chance and that was at 2-2 could have made it 3-2 what does woodrow do he hits it straight at the keeper he could have taken a touch taken it around the keeper maybe just made the angle a little bit more acute and then slotted in because the keyboard committed at woodrow's feet so yeah that, that's what I'm going to say about Woodrow. I don't understand why when there is literally nothing up top, you want to have some pace. You want to try and stretch play. If, you, if you're going to go direct, you want someone that's able to chase it. And Joe Taylor is perfect for that. Look, we haven't seen much of him, but I know that the kid has pace. And the fact that he didn't even get on the pitch today is concerning. Obviously, 
something's happened with Joe Taylor. I don't want to speculate. If he's not going to get game time here or more than five, six minutes off the bench, deep into injury time, he's well within his rights to leave. Right, enough about that. So in terms of the second half performance, it was one-way traffic. Coventry are probably one of the best teams I've seen this season. They're, they're very much in a false position. I don't understand how they're, they're so far down. It's a case of, as I said, the strikers didn't have the confidence. They're making errors when it came to entering the penalty box, not passing to the right person that's in the right position, and defensive errors at the back. But Coventry, today, light years ahead of us. The fact that we've thrown away another lead... I can't think off the top of my head any manager I've seen in my 29 years going to Luton Town. I can't think of under another manager where we have chucked away this many games when we've been in a winning position. I I, I honestly can't think of it, but under Rob Edwards, there's Coventry today. That Bournemouth game, which was horrendous, leading 3-0, losing 4-3. Arsenal, we, we managed to get 3-2 ahead, ended up losing that 4-3. Newcastle, we're 4-2 up. And this season at Oxford as well. Oxford's came back from two goals down. We are Charity FC right now. If you need your season to get a kickstart, come to us. We are the guys to get your season kickstarted. Now, look, I know a few of those were Premier League teams and fair play. These are teams with multi billion pound talents or whatever modern day players are measured with but it's been a recurring theme mentally right now the team are very fragile you score a goal against us and we will collapse in on ourselves rob edwards himself he looks completely defeated and i honestly don't know where we go from here being the early kickoff we could be in the relegation zone by the end of this game week believe me i'm not one to think that luton town have a divine right to win every single football game we don't no one has a divine right to win every single football game but i'll tell you what we do have a right to as fans we have a right to see the team putting in a shift and for all the fans that went there today, paying £37 a ticket, and if you drove, £40 for parking, if you took the train, between £60 and £90 for a train ticket, and then all the money that you're spending on food and drink while you're there, you deserve, as a fan, to see your team put in a performance. Look like they actually care. Today, Mark Robbins completely showed Rob Edwards how to manage a game. Mark Robbins saw a team that were knocking at the door and he made tactical tweaks to unlock Luton Town's defence. His substitution of Tor immediately affected the game because Tor went on and scored. What did Rob Edwards' subs actually do? Not much. Not much at all. If anything, it made the game play more into the hands of Coventry because we just sat back. We weren't actually trying to progress the ball forwards. And now we refer back to the Fop Mob momentum chart again. We barely got into Coventry's half other than that one chance I mentioned earlier with Corley Woodrow. I, I, I'm out of words. I'm actually speechless. I... If you've been watching these post-match reactions for a while, you would have seen, I've, I've lost it before. I've completely lost it with the way the team play. But right now, I'm, I'm really confused. I'm really confused about how I thought we turned a corner and shown some fight, some actual substance to our performance. And then we've followed it up with that. Even just... This being a game of two halves, that old football cliche. In the first half, we looked great. Yes, Coventry were absolutely battering us off the park, you know, passing the ball around, but we defended well. When we progressed the ball upwards, it actually looked a threat. It did. 
And Chong in particular, I thought he had a great game. So yeah, t take him off. Take him off. He, he was having a great game. So yeah, we, we don't need him on the pitch. Morris was having a great game. He did really well with, uh, I believe, the, the kids these days call it a pre-assist for Elijah's goal, where, you know, he controlled the ball perfectly, slotted in Kraus, and then the pass from Kraus to Elijah was fantastic. So, yeah, all the players that are affecting the game, let's take them off. Chong, Elijah, Morris, Kraus, all these players that are affecting the game, let's get them off. I don't understand it. I'm I'm at a loss. I, I I don't I don't understand it. Yeah, when you could see we're under the cosh, and I've said this before, I'm not a UEFA accredited coach, but I could see you were under the cosh. So why bring on two attackers? Like yeah, Jacob Brown could have done a job by himself, but you pack the midfield. Like when it looks like you chucked away a two goal lead to go two two. Yeah, just pack the midfield. Try, try not to get played through. But no, you know, we'll go two up top and we won't even get the ball up to the forwards. It's fine, but I guess, you know, what do I know? I'm just a guy on YouTube. Oh, I haven't even talked about their third goal. Look, you, you can't blame refs. Look, you know, we had that goal against Sunderland where was Clark interfering, even though he was in an offside position. He... He went for the ball, didn't he? But then Morris turns it in. It was ruled out. And then today, Joel Latibodia is interfering with play. He goes for the ball. He swings at it. It's an offside position. And then Haji Wright turns it in when Daiki Hashioka clearing a ball. I, I thought Hashioka actually had a very good game. He defended really well, you know, right up until the second half. But Hashi, he just loves this way of defending where when he's trying to clear the ball but he's actually facing our goal it's it's madness to be honest so the ball hits hashi and haji Wright turns it in yeah well to be honest that third goal it, i felt it was coming the pressure was just insurmountable towards the end and then it didn't really help that tom holmes got sent off for a second bookable offense I don't know where we go from here, to be honest, because we're, we're going into the West Brom game now. There's no Alfie Doughty, he picked up another booking. Weird that you pick up a booking for taking a free kick early. I figured Doughty was going to get booked, so I just didn't think it would, he'd get booked for that. And then Tom Holmes, who has been fantastic since he's come in, and it, he's he's been sent off. At least he only misses one game, but it's a game where we don't have many defenders. Like, will Mengi be back? Will Amari Bell be back? I honestly don't know right now. I guess we wait and see what happens. There's going to be a lot of noise on social media. Everyone's going to have an opinion. This is just mine. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinions on it, though. Where do you think Luton Town go from here? Let us know in the comments. Try and enjoy your weekend, I guess. And as always, come on, you hatters.